lenses come in all matter of shapes and sizes. You have wide angle lenses, you have standard lenses, you have telephotos, you have zooms versus primes. The list is endless. Common question I see asked all the time is about buying lenses. Now, sometimes this is somebody's got a choice of two different lenses that are very similar to each other and they're just after people's opinions as to which one would be best for them. And sometimes I see people who have no clue as to what lens they want to buy. They just know they want to buy a lens. And then it leads to the question, what lens should I buy? I'm going to apologize in advance on this as well. You may hear some banging noises in the background. That is because my next door neighbor is having a complete extension built on their house and the builders are inconsiderate gits making a lot of noise. Hopefully it won't disturb the video too much, but just to forewarn you, if you're hearing a lot of thudding noise, those are builders. My neighbors are not having the time of their life. Now I'm getting off topic. Back to lenses. So... You might be looking at buying a lens and thinking, I don't want to get a lens, but I don't know what lens to get. So you might think, go ask other people's opinions. The problem with this is that buying a lens, much like buying a camera or much like buying a lot of other things, is very user specific. My favorite analogy for this is always cars. We can all relate to buying a car or trying to choose a car. Now, if you're looking for a car for you and your partner and three kids and a dog for going on family holidays, and you turn around to a young bachelor who drives a two-seater convertible and, and ask them what car they think you should buy, odds are you'll be leaving the kids at home. Now, this video is not me going through every single lens on the market and saying this is good, this is bad, whatever, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, that video would be three weeks long, and, and you don't want to be looking at me for that long, do you? Secondly, is that I've not tried every single lens on the market. When you consider there's so many different formats of cameras, you've got micro four thirds, APS-C, full frame, medium format. There's so many different formats and so many different manufacturers making lenses for those different formats that there's just an almost infinite number of lenses to choose from. And even if I did go through every single lens, it still wouldn't answer the questions as to which ones are actually going to be best suited to your personal needs because your personal needs might be different from everybody else's. So I'm not giving you the answer as to what lens you should buy, but what I am going to do is show you the questions you should be asking yourself and how those different answers are going to influence your final decision as to what lens you should buy. The first question that I always pose to people whenever I see them ask the question, what lens should I buy? And they're being very generalized about their statements. So they're saying, you know, I want to upgrade from the kit lens or I want a good lens for video. The first question that I ask them is, what about your current lens are you not happy with? Odds are, if you're watching this video and you're looking at buying a lens, you've already got at least one lens. Might only be the kit lens, but it doesn't matter. Now, if you're shooting with a kit lens or any other lens for that matter, and you're looking at buying another lens, it's because there's something about your current setup that you're not happy with. So let's say you're shooting with an 18 to 55 kit lens and you're always hitting that 55 mil focal length and thinking, I, I wanna go further, I need to go further, but this, is this just isn't long enough. Then you know instantly you're looking for a lens with a longer focal length than that. If you never use the wide end of the lens, you're always shooting the long end, then you can look for a lens that is completely longer focal length than 55 mil. If you're using a mix of both, then you might want to get a lens that is still 18 mil, but slightly longer than 55, like uh, an 18 to 135 mil or something longer than that. It might be that you never use the 55 mil end of the focal length and you're always at the 18 mil thinking, I wish this thing was wider. It might be that you're quite happy with the focal range, but the aperture of the lens is restricting you and you're always shooting at high ISOs or you're not getting as blurry a background as you might want. Then you could look towards a lens with a similar focal length, just with a faster aperture. Now, there's no hard and fast rule that says if you're doing one type of photography, you must be using one particular focal length or a type of focal length. It doesn't work like that. There's guidelines as to what generally works best, but 
ultimately it comes down to you as an individual as to what's going to suit you best. Now, focal lengths can fall into one of several categories. So generally, kind of 35 mil up to about 85 mil is what's known as your standard focal length. Between 35 and 24 mil is what is known as wide angle. Wider than 24 mil is known as ultra wide angle. And then if your millimeters go below the teens, you're into stupidly ultra wide. Now, the other end of the spectrum, longer than 85 millimeters, is delving into the telephoto end of things. So generally, kind of 85 to 135 as regarded as short telephoto. Between 135 up to between 2 and 300 are regarded as medium telephoto. And then longer than 300 mil is super telephoto. And then if you get into the likes of 800 mils, you've gone from telephoto to telescope. But that's the, the broad spectrum as to what they regard focal length as. Now, it is worth noting, with this, I'm talking effective focal lengths. So the 35 mil full frame equivalents. Now, if you're shooting with an 18 mil kit lens on an APS-C camera, you're not actually in the ultra wide angle territory because you've got the crop factor to consider. 18 mil on an APS-C camera equates to about 28 millimeters effective focal length. So kit lenses generally go from wide angle up to kind of short telephoto, maybe edging into medium telephoto if you've got something like an 18 to 135. Now, as a rough guide, but not an absolute rule, ultra wide angle lenses are generally well regarded for things like landscape and architecture photography. When you're trying to see a very large area in one shot. Wide angle is still good for landscape photography. It's also well regarded for street photography, shooting people where you're trying to still capture some of the scene, but you want to help try and isolate a particular subject. Your standard kind of zoom is, well, it's a general purpose. It's good for all sorts, really. Wedding photography tends to be kept within this sort of range. Portraits can drift into this range. There's all sorts you can do. Short telephoto is generally well regarded for portraits because you can get more of a tighter compression on your subject and not distort the face, but still get some isolation. And then into the telephotos is generally good for things like sports and wildlife because you can't physically get close to your subject, so you have to use a longer lens to bring them closer to you. That is a rough guide, but it is not a hard and fast rule. You can use telephoto lenses for landscapes if you want to pick out a particular part of a subject. You can use wide angle lenses for sports and wildlife if you are getting close to your subject or you want to incorporate a lot of the scene into the image. Depending on what the kind of things you're trying to photograph are, this will give you some sort of idea as to what a good effective focal lengths to be looking at are. The other then pain in the backside question you've got to ask yourself is do you go for a prime or do you go for a zoom lens? Now, for those who don't know, a zoom lens is so-called a zoom lens because it physically zooms. So this lens, for example, is an 18 to 135 mil, which means it's 18 mil on the wide end and 135 mil on the long end. And I can pick any individual focal length in between those two values. A prime lens is a fixed lens, so it only has one focal length. So this, for example, is an 85mm prime lens, so we can only shoot at 85mm. If I want to change the composition of my image using a prime lens, I either need to move myself closer or further away from the subject, or crop it in post later. So you might be thinking, well, a zoom lens must be the best because it fits like 100 different focal lengths in one lens versus just one. But you might be very mistaken there. The only advantage to a zoom lens over an equivalent priced prime lens is the versatility of being able to have multiple different focal lengths in one lens. In every other aspect, however, prime lenses are generally better. Because a prime lens is only operating at one focal length, there's not a lot of glass needing to move inside the lens, which means it can be designed and optimized better for that one particular focal length. Whereas with a zoom lens, because all this glass is moving, there'll be parts of the zoom range, usually the extremes, that aren't as sharp as other parts of the zoom range. Then you've got aperture and size. Because a prime lens is fixed, 
then it can be made with a more minimal amount of glass versus a zoom lens that has to have more glass elements inside. Or in order to keep the size and weight down, it might incorporate a variable aperture design. And this will be at 5.6 by the time you get to 85 mil. This lens is an 85 mil F1.8. F1.8 is three and a third stops brighter than F5.6, which means it's letting in a lot more light than this. The downside of the prime lens is that it obviously can't zoom. So if you're going out somewhere and you're maybe going to be taking a mixture of wide angle lenses and some telephoto shots, you're going to need to pack our prime lens for each of those scenarios. So while an equivalent prime lens will be smaller and lighter than a zoom lens, you might find yourself actually needing to pack three or four lenses to cover all the different focal ranges you're going to be shooting and actually end up with a kit that is a lot heavier than one zoom lens. So the whole primes versus zooms is individual preference. Some people love shooting only primes, some people only shoot zooms, but ultimately there's only one person that can make the decision of what lens should you buy, and that's you. It's you that's buying it. So the moral of the story is if you're considering buying a new lens for your kit for whatever reason, the first question shouldn't be asking other people, what lens should I buy? It should be asking yourself, what about my current setup am I not happy with? If you've managed to narrow it down to two very similar lenses and you're just after clarification, other people's advice is very useful. But don't let other people dictate what kit goes in your bag because that's going to dictate how you shoot, and then you're not taking your own photos, you're essentially taking other people's. So that's it for this video, guys. As always, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below, although hopefully you're not about to ask me what lens you should buy. But hopefully, I will see you in the next video.